Okay, I already did one on this in the past, um, but since I did a uh, mono band on a Heath Kit SB220 and it worked out so well, I decided to mono band this uh, Yoko, modified Yokogawa Medical Systems um, RF power uh, generator. Um, they use these for um, RF uh, power generation um, in the medical field and that's what this one was originally used for um, but this one has already been mo uh, well it wasn't mono banded it was converted to use as a um, multi-band amateur radio RF amplifier and originally this doesn't come with any uh, uh, changeover relays or anything like that because it's used you know as a, a generator for the medical and they don't have you know receivers or transmitters and feed through so it doesn't need relays or anything like that so it didn't come with it but this one was originally came with um, I believe like 10 through 80 meters um, on the magnet switch type there that that actually was a band switch and it changed all the bands and um, there was a book on it or a manual and um, I think I was 10 meters or 28 megahertz and and I don't know if it went to C or B or even A but you know it was like 80 meters um, this amp is very um, close or almost equivalent to the uh, Tokyo high power I think HL 22 if my memory's right now I'm old and got CRS so you know don't take that to the bank uh, uh, but it's extremely close to the Tokyo high power uh, do 3500 Z amp except again this one was um, set up to be a RF generator a plasma generator and the Tokyo high powers you know was set up to be an amateur uh, radio amplifier um, a few things I like about these they're heavy duty made um, they have some medical grade components in it. Uh, it's very heavy. Um, this amp is, um, you know, maybe a touch bigger than an SB220, but it has about twice the weight as a health, uh, Heath Kit SB220. Heavier power supply, heavier components, and all that. Um, some medical grade components in it also. Um, so this is it under the bottom, and we recently mono banded it because the um, heat kit came out so well I thought so anyway that's the original um, 10 meter coil that used to have the 15 meter tap on it then it had a bigger coil in it in this area for the um, you know 20 through 80 meters um, but we left the original coil in there we uh, cut out the band switch and all that hand band stuff and this did have a tuned input that was connected to the uh, band switch or the magnet switch on that one and the tune input is all in here and that little board for the tune input is still in there and the switch was behind it to switch the coils and stuff here but that's all disconnected and you know not only is it mono banded for 10 meters right there with that uh, single coil no band switch um, the input tuner or tuning in it was all fixed you know uh, 10 meter coil and fixed caps in there everything was fixed for you know the 10 through 80 meters in this amp so what we did we took out all that input stuff and we used the same 10 meter coil fixed toroid coil but we took out the um, fixed capacitors and took out the band switch and all that and ran it direct um, and one of these is the input cap and one of these is the output cap so it's a pi sec circuit for the input same as it was before but now it's mono banded and it's a uh, tuned or a dual tuned input circuit for the um, for the input so you got a basically an input tune and an input load cap on the input um, side of the circuit so you can uh, tune the input uh, this amp is so heavy it's very difficult to get that band switch and all that out of there so we left the band switch in and we just got the tuners underneath here and then that's the um, uh, output RF2 component and 
that's the bottom of the power supply so we just wanted to show that while we got it on its side so we're gonna put the camera down because this thing got some weight to it and uh, turn it on its side and I'll fire it up we got it unplugged because uh, we don't like sticking our hands in it and all that other stuff is is plugged in even with it off Oh, I bumped a knob or two. I hope I haven't knocked it off as far as the tuning and all that because we had it all tuned up. Might have to try retuning it with the camera. So we got it sitting down. We're going to plug it in while we got the camera down. Um, this amp is 220 only. Does not run on 110. And the um, high voltage power supply runs at about... Uh, 3900 volts resting you know it's got negative bias going to it but the um, voltage is high on this thing okay we got her plugged in and we're gonna turn her on on the front is pretty sterile all you got is your normal tune and load and that used to be the equivalent to the band switch, but that does nothing now. The uh, magnet type X band switch is just there. And basically you got um, power off and on. And the way this one is, the um, operate switch keys it down. So if you, you know, doing test or, you know, uh, uh, don't want to run your foot switch, you can turn it on and, and operate it. It'd be... Um, the same as hitting the foot switch by putting it operate. So putting it down in standby, the foot switch will still work. So um, you know, if we when we key it down now with the foot switch, it will key down in standby, and operate keys it down on its own directly. And then it's got a single meter, um, and it only reads plate current. That's a plate current meter, and that current meter goes up to one amp. And again, it runs at about uh, 3,900 volts resting. Um, goes to about 3,700 volts at, at full key down. A little bit of voltage drop, but um, you know, heavy duty transformer, uh, heavy duty uh, snappy in caps in this thing. I guess I should have showed a uh, little bit of it. We're gonna be careful, because again, we got it warming up. It's got 4,000 volts, but that's the uh, tune and load cap. You know, a lot more substantial than your heat kit SB220. That's the um, heavy duty plate blocking cap. Um, that's that four turn, you know, coil in it. And you can just look at the, um, look at the uh, uh, thickness and the coils and stuff in this thing. And um, the way it's designed, it's just a lot better designed than, a, you know, not trying to dog a heat kit or anything, but, um, um, you know a lot more amplifier here than the um, heat kit so anyway we ought to be warmed up and hopefully ready to go my whistle wasn't working earlier so we're gonna try to use a, a RF generator hopefully and we got it the same setup as we had the um, SB220 on the watt meter on the left is gonna show the uh, input power or the drive and Watt meter in the middle goes to my antenna. We ain't gonna run it on the antenna. And uh, the third watt meter there goes to my big dummy load. You know, I got a, a 5kW dummy load up top, so that watt meter goes to that. So this is gonna show the output. We are on average, and it's on the 2000 watt scale. And this one is gonna show the input uh, going into the amp on the 200 uh, watt scale simultaneously. Uh, so we should be warmed enough. Oh shoot! All right, we plugged in with the uh, jumper back here. It was acting like it didn't want to key down. There we go. Jumper came in loose. Like I say, we moved it around. Um, we're just hitting the foot switch and we're just getting a little bit of play current because again, even with that 4,000 volts, um, it's got a little bit of negative bias on the uh, 3500Z tubes. 
think it's running 3500 ZGs but not 100% sure I didn't really check on that so hopefully now we're ready to go gonna key down the amp and key down the mic hopefully with the camera on and right there on the input we're dead keying about 5 watts on the 200 watt scale and it's doing a little over uh, 60 watts I guess on the 2000 watt scale so doing a little bit over 10 to 1 on the input with that low dead key and instead of whistling we're going to try this RF generator so we're going to turn that on with the mic key and right there we're um, got about 80 90 into it on that 200 watt scale and we got a thousand oh we're tuning it up a little bit because it was doing better than that in 1100 out with that and that's all on average and last we just gonna put it on peak reach over this thing carefully and over on peak is not quite in the corner but um well yeah there it is it's laying in the corner I would guess it's doing about 2500 peak watts but just uh about 92 in the watts is creeping up as I got this thing um, very little plate current you know with that swinging watch going into this thing but um, that's the Yokogawa uh, dual 3500Z amp mono bandit again that's peak watts you know study in the corner with that um, tone in there and we have a little under 1200 watts playing with the tune and load a little bit because I had it a little higher earlier but anyway, um, that's going to be it for the Yokogawa Mono Bandit. You know, Mono Bandit does make a um, pretty good difference. Of course, if I hit it a little harder, I probably could get about, um, I'm going to turn that off, about two grand average out of this thing. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. Yokogawa P9306UL, equivalent to the um, Tokyo High Power. I believe HL22, if memory serves me correct. Okay, that's it for this. Bye.